These are instructions on how to prepare the Honduras Wildcrafted Sea Moss. This is our two ounce package. And I'm going to go ahead and empty it into this bowl. As you can see, I have put the entire package into the bowl. Next, you want to cover the sea moss with water. You can use distilled or spring water. In this video, I am using distilled water. You want to cover it enough to cover the sea moss. After that, what I do is spread out the sea moss evenly so that it is all submerged in the water. I let mine sit for a couple of hours before rinsing it off. I do go through it piece by piece and pull out any of the discolored bits, kind of like you see there that has a few of the dark marks on it. I separate those pieces and discard them. After your sea moss has been thoroughly cleaned, you want to add it to a pot and cover it with more fresh water. Again, you can use spring or distilled water. You want to put enough water to definitely cover the sea moss. I tend to add a little bit extra water to compensate for the water that is evaporated while it is boiling. So I'd say you want to at least double the volume of water as opposed to what you have sea moss. Then you want to go ahead and put that on kind of a slow boil, not too high. You can cover it with the lid that's optional. It can boil over quickly, so you definitely want to watch it. I leave my lid slightly ventilated to avoid it boiling over. This is what it looks like after it's boiled for about 15 minutes or so. You want to let it boil for a total of at least 30 minutes so that it gets nice and soft. After it's done boiling, you want to go ahead and let it sit and cool off. And this is what it looks like after it has completely cooled. You see it has kind of a jelly kind of consistency. And I'm going to just add this entire batch, including the water, to my blender. And I'm going to blend that up. And this is what it looks like in the blender. And you want to just blend it until all of the sea moss is completely smooth. For me, I typically blend it about two minutes on high. This is what the sea moss looks like after it has been thoroughly blended. It's a little bit loose, but the consistency greatly depends on how much water you choose to add. For a thicker gel, you want to add less water. For a thinner gel, you want to add more water. I recommend that you add it to a mason jar. It has given me three 16 ounce mason jars of sea moss. The final step is to cover your sea moss jars with cheesecloth and then you can top it with the open lid or a rubber band. This is a sea moss that was made with less water so it has a thicker consistency. As you can see here, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want depending on how much liquid you choose to add. I have some roasted dandelion root tea here that I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of tablespoons of sea moss to. Now this is the one that's a little more liquidy, which I prefer it that way because it blends better with teas. However, the thicker sea moss tends to blend better with smoothies. So as you can see, it is dissolving and mixing pretty well with the tea. You can consume this with your herbal teas. You can consume this with your smoothies. You can also consume it as is. And for those of you who are going to say that sea moss loses its benefits when it is boiled, it does not. Real foods, which are alkaline foods, remain electric even when they are burned. Now, um, from what I understand, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, anytime you cook food, it loses its electricity. That makes it that is the biggest lie that has ever been told. That has never been true. Raw food is better than cooked food. Food? You could never destroy food. You could take food raw. You could take food cooked. You could take food and grind it to, a, to carbon and drink it and it's still electrical. If it's food, you cannot destroy energy. Food is energy. Could you destroy energy? No. It changes state, but not destroy it.
How can you destroy energy? But the stuff that they call food is garbage. They, they, they're eating starch, raw starch. I remember when I went to New York, there are many raw people in New York. They eat raw starch, but they're all are anemic. I know them even, most of them are dead now, my age that I remember that was on a raw food gate. John Harris was one of many others. They've been dead. Why? They were eating raw starch. You could eat food in any way, in any state. Food cannot be destroyed because food is what? It is energy, it's electrical. You cannot destroy electricity. I cooked the Maya. How many people have I cured of sickle cell anemia? How many people have I cured of AIDS? I cook everything I give them. But why is it so powerful that it still works? But we can't see these things. Because we think that food is carrots, beef, piece of meat. That's food. Eat that raw. Well, if we go there, all we have to think about is Charlie Mingus. That's all he ate was raw meat and wine. Well, when he died, they said the poor brother could only laugh and cry. And he died very young. Now, that's another misinformation. Remember, we have to set the record straight. You're talking to the brother, the only brother, that had to prove to the world, scientifically, that he cured AIDS is Dr. Sebi. And in doing so, he had to destroy all, all of the premise to establish the one that he represents, the African biomineral balance. 